Hey, chemistry students. I'm going to do some examples from this worksheet called Polyatomic Ions Writing Formulas. So <clears throat> this is how you write an ionic compound formula uh, when you have a polyatomic ion. And polyatomic ions are ions that are made up of more than one kind of, of atom. The atoms are combined together and they have a charge on them. So the examples here, we've got monatomic ions, mono meaning one, uh, calcium with a plus two, chlorine with a minus one, and they combine together to form calcium chloride. Okay, and when we write that, we don't use a parenthesis for the chlorine, even though there's two of them. The other example here, we've got hydrogen plus one, oxygen minus two. They combine together to form water, which is H2O. And again, you'll notice that we don't write hydrogen. We don't write hydrogen in a parentheses here with the two outside of it. We don't ever do that with monatomic ions. But when we get to polyatomic ions, um, like this one right here, uh, the hydroxide, OH, had <clears throat> those two um, elements, hydrogen and oxygen, come together and they form a polyatomic ion. Poly meaning more than one, and ion, of course, meaning that it's charged. So the OH has an overall charge of negative one. It combines with sodium, Na with a plus one, and just like with monatomic ions, the charges cancel out. So we have a we have a plus one and a negative one, and they balance each other out. So we get this, the formula of NaOH, and nothing is in parentheses. That's not the Na parentheses OH is not correct. The next one that we have is an example. We've got calcium, Ca with a plus two and OH with a negative one, okay? So in this case, we are gonna do a similar thing like we did with the, um, with the monatomic ions in that we use the crisscross method. Remember, we don't ever use the charges. We just get rid of the charges, so the plus and the negative don't apply to this, but the numbers do. We take the number off of the CA and bring it down as a subscript on the OH, so we bring the two down, and we bring the one down, but remember we don't, the one is always understood. We don't ever write the one. So I just put it there for now. But then we end up, because this two right here, this two is now attached to an OH, a polyatomic ion, we use parentheses around the ion, okay? Because if we didn't, if we left it like this right here, this would tell us that we have one cal one calcium and one oxygen and two hydrogen okay and that is not correct what we have is let me erase this here again so you can see it a little more clearly what we have is we've got one calcium and we've got two of the hydroxides okay because remember the calcium is a plus two and the hydroxide is a minus one, and this is a minus one. So we've got a plus two, and a minus one, and a minus one, and they balance each other out. Two negatives equal one positive two. Let's take a look at some of these other examples here. Now this is very easy because um, we've got the, we've got NH4 plus one, IO3 minus one. So all we're doing is we're looking at the charges, the cation and the anion, and they're a plus one and a minus one. Just like with, just like with the um, monatomic ions, the charges cancel out. All we have to do is just write the formula, NH4IO3. That's an O, okay? No, no other numbers, no charges when we write the formula. Um, for these for these ionic compounds, we don't ever write pluses or minus. Okay, those are just there to help us know how many that we have of each. Uh, let's go down to number two. 
I have some of these circled because I want to cover some specific types of examples. So <clears throat> number two, right underneath it, we have NH4, again with its plus one, and we have SO3 with a negative two. Okay, so they're different. Plus one, negative two, um, we need to use the crisscross method. So we're going to take the two, remember not the, not the charge, just the two, and put it down there. And the one, we're going to put it right here. Okay, that's kind of messy. Make this a little bit bigger here. Okay, so we can see these. What we did, again, the one was brought down here, and the two was brought down here. So what do we end up with? N H four, and then there's a two, there's two of them. So we have to put the parentheses around the polyatomic ion and then S O three. And since we have one of them, we don't need the, we don't need the parentheses. Okay. And again, if we didn't have the parentheses, if we didn't have the parentheses here, what we would have, what it would look like would be N H 42. And that is not correct. Okay, so that is all wrong. Make sure you use the parentheses so you know how many you have of each one. Okay, let's go over here to number 11. We've got CO with a plus 3 and C2O4 with a minus 2. And we are going to use the crisscross, crisscross method. Bring the 3 down, bring the 2 down. <coughs> This is a great example because when we look at this right here, okay, it's a capital C with a small o. That tells you that it's a monatomic ion. Okay, it's only one thing. In order for it to be a polyatomic ion, you have to have more than one capital letter like you do right here. Okay, so again, let's clean this up here. Take a look at it. And you've got CO capital C small o, okay, cobalt, that, that's one, that's one element. C, capital C, capital O is two different elements. That means it's a polyatomic ion. We're still going to use the crisscross method, okay, with a two, bring the two down, and we bring the three down. So what does that look like in its formula? C, capital C, small o, with a subscript two, and again, we're not using we're not using the parentheses on that. If it was a capital C capital O, okay, then you would have to use parentheses because it would be some form of polyatomic ion. But since there's only one capital letter, then that's we're only that's monatomic, one kind of element. And then the rest of it was C two O four. The subscript that we brought down was a three. We're going to put that 3 here, and because we have more than one of the polyatomic ions, we use the parentheses. Okay, let's take a look at the one right underneath it, where again, we have, this is a monatomic ion, it's not polyatomic, okay, and we've got a plus 3 again, and then we've got capital B, capital O, that means it's polyatomic, but it doesn't really matter in any way, because we've got a plus 3 and a minus 3, so these charges cancel each other out. So all we have to do is just write capital C small o, B, O, 3, and that's it. Okay. And I want to do one more example. I know I had one more. There it is. Okay, so we can do an example like this, which is somewhat similar to what we just did, where you had a plus 3 and a minus 3. So we reduced, you always reduce when you can. In this case, again, we have a capital M, small, small n, which means that that is a monatomic, and then CrO4 with two capital letters, the C and the O, that means that's a polyatomic. We have a 4 and a 2, <coughs> and we are going to crisscross. Okay, we can bring a 2, crisscross. We're going to bring a 4, but we're going to reduce those, okay? We're going to reduce those because we have a common denominator of 2. You can divide 2 by 2 and get 1, MN1, and you know that we're not going to write that because 1s are always understood. 
and then CRO4, 2, and because this is a polyatomic, we need parentheses. Okay, and that's how you do these examples. I've done five. You've got 15 more, but I think I covered everything that... Um, all the different kinds that you'll see. Make sure you ask your teachers, write emails, get in those Google Meets, and uh, ask questions. Good luck on this.